Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the power contained in your word. The seeds that are here, Father, that grow up, spring up in us to eternal life. And Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning that we have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church, Lord. And Father, we promise to be doers of the word and not hearers only by the power of your Holy Spirit helping us. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. Turn with me, if you would, to Acts, the 10th chapter. That's where we're going to start. Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. It's a familiar passage. You probably can quote it, but we'll read it anyway. Acts 10, verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Praise God. That's good news. How many of you believe it's God's will to save everybody? Yeah? Good. We have, it's pretty much unanimous. It's God's will to save everybody, right? John 3, 16. God so loved the world... He gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever, that would be everybody. It's eligible for everybody. Well, is everybody saved today? That was a quick answer. They're, they're definitely not. You're right. But we said it's God's will to save them, right? But not everybody's saved, right? God wants everybody saved, right? But not everybody saved. Sad to say that people burn in hell that their salvation was paid for. They just never received it. Isn't that, that is really amazing, isn't it? There's people today already gone that's burning in hell that the blood of Jesus paid for their salvation. They just never took hold of it. Wow. Well, let me ask you this. Is it God's will to heal everybody? Okay. Seems the general consensus is yes, it is God's will to heal everybody. Let me ask you this. Is everybody healed today? No. The doctors are wealthy because plenty of people sick. Right? All right. So it's the same thing is what I'm saying. God's will is to save everybody, but yet not everyone is saved. The same vein, God's will is to heal everybody, but not everybody's healed. Hallelujah. And if you want to look at it legally, strictly from a legal point of view, legally, when Jesus arose from the dead, he did save everybody, he did heal everybody. The problem is, on our end, we don't receive it. And you can go straight to hell for not receiving it. And you can accept every disease that the doctor wants to pronounce on you and die with it even though you're legally healed. You still with me? All right. I'm going to try not to, to uh, lose you on this. I want you with me. Acts 10.38. Last week we said... That who, in Romans, we read Romans, the 6th chapter, I believe verse 16. We said, whoever you yield yourself a servant to, you're going to be that slave to that thing or person. And we indicated that um, sickness and disease, if you yield to it, then it will enslave you. That's just to set the stage. In other words... You have the power, you have the authority by the Word of God, by the Holy Spirit in order to say no to these forces. You, you, you've got to understand that at, uh, or this will all stop here. It won't do you any good. If you think that is greater than the Lord in you. okay. If you think the flu is greater than the Lord in you, you're going to get the flu. If you think AIDS is greater than the Lord in you, you're going to have a problem. 
You hear what I'm saying? You've got to understand that God is greater than these things and God lives in you and God passed the baton to you giving you the authority on earth to say no to it. And that's what we talked about last week. This week I want to show you, actually, let me just go back here a minute. I wrote down five or six points that you need to know that we're going to discuss in detail over the next few weeks about divine health. First one I put down is you got to be fully convinced it's God's will to heal everyone, including you. Now, it's not enough to just believe God will heal everybody. you got to make it home to you. No matter what the devil tells you, how bad you were when you were three years old or whatever, you know, he just uses all kinds of junk. You, God's healing is for you individually. You must be fully persuaded, fully convinced of that. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Divine health is yours. All right? The second thing I wrote down is that sickness and disease are under the curse. And you are redeemed from the curse. So you've got to understand that sickness and disease entered when Adam failed. God intended Adam and Eve to live forever. You can see that, a remnant of it today, in that if you cut yourself, it will heal back. You don't have to do anything special unless you get it infected. But if you just nick yourself, then it heals itself. It's meant to live forever. But sin entered in and perverted that. Death entered in. Well... That's, a, that's part of the curse. And Jesus brought life. He is life. So we live in a day, in an era, where God has provided for us to not be under the curse. Meaning, those things that are under the curse don't belong to us. They're not ours. Are you still with me? All right, the third thing you need to know is that you've got to walk by faith in this and not by your symptoms because there's going to be attempts of the devil to try to put these things on you nobody's immune from that now he'll do it in various ways doesn't matter how he does it just say no to it let me say to you that you cannot be chasing your healing or a manifestation of it if you're chasing it, you're only in hope, and you'll die with it. I'm saying this very bluntly because it's life and death situation. And I've been to the bedside of many of them that said, but pastor, I believe that I'm getting it. I just don't know why it's not here. And some die. It must be settled in your heart now that it is already done. You are already healed. I don't care what lying symptoms are in your body. You are the healed of God. That's got to be settled in your heart. All right? The fourth thing I wrote down is you've got to draw nigh to God. You've got to draw near to God. Resisting the devil. You must learn to speak to the mountain when it's in front of you. Use your authority. It's, it's not enough to just ask God to heal you. You understand God already did that. You're going to have to tell it, get out of my life. You hear what I'm saying? You're going to have to speak to it. Whatever lying symptoms manifested in your life, fever, runny nose, coughing, more seriously, cancer, for instance, say to it, you have no right here. Get out in the name of Jesus. The fifth thing I wrote down is you must be free of wrong doctrines that hinder your faith. 
Now, the unfortunate, it, many, many blessings are in Christian TV, Christian radio. We just got this thing that uh, it's called, I don't know how they say it, Rocco, Rocku, Roku. What is it? Rock you, thank you. Well, we just bought one of those uh, because we don't have a cable, uh, and so we put it into the system, and we it runs by our wireless internet, and we can download Kenneth Hagen, watch all his teachings. We can download Kenneth Copeland, watch him 24 hours, his teaching. We can watch TBN 24 hours. We can watch Daystar 24. Hours. We can watch any of these things free. We don't have a monthly bill. Praise the Lord. The problem with that is I shudder sometimes leaving my wife home with that because of the junk on Christian TV in the name of Christianity that's teaching that sickness is supposed to be part of your learning criteria or something like that. And uh, you have to be very cautious with the blessing that it is to be able to get all that stuff, you've got to be very cautious what's going in your ears doctrine-wise. Because if that seed is planted in there of unbelief, and you begin to water it a little bit, it'll come up, and it'll stop your divine help. And then you'll wonder why. The sixth thing I wrote down is time is not the healer. Time is is not the healer it may take some time for you to experience your health but it's not the healer time can work against you because if you've been in a battle with this thing for a year and the devil will remind you it's been a year now chuck where is your health where is your god hello what if it's been four years, five years? Listen, there's no clock in heaven. So time is not, the, you know, you hear somebody, well, with time, it'll, it'll go away. Time is the healer. No, it's not. Not mentally, not emotionally, not in any way. Time is never the healer. Okay? Time will work against you in many cases. So you've got to get that out. The word is your help. And then the seventh thing I wrote down is that which voice is louder to you? The voice of pain, the voice of discomfort, the voice of your symptom, or the voice of the Word of God? Right? Which, which one is the commanding your attention the most? You hear what I'm saying? Are you with me? Now, we're going to take those things one at a time over the next few weeks. And we're going to get deeper in that. You know what? Let me just say this to you. How much money do you think they spend on scientists researching a cure for cancer? Okay. Okay, we, 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 we agree. It's a lot of money, right? How much, let me ask this. How much time do you think is spent researching a cure for cancer? Think of the numbers, the multitude of physicians and research scientists that dedicate their lives to exploring medical science. Thank God for them, right? Because we're a whole lot further today than maybe in the early 1900s. But let me ask you this. Why doesn't the church do that? Well, we, come, we have trouble keeping people for an hour on Sunday morning. And woe be it to get them here Tuesday or Thursday. But yet you want these benefits. Well, these people pay a price for them that go in there and spend their life researching. And you, I think about on the, like a, a I don't have this, so maybe I'll pick it up on that new thing I got, but like the National Geographic Channel where they go out into the jungles with the monkeys and live with them, you know, to research the monkeys. Who in the world has a desire to do that? But there are people that do. And, and thank God they do because then we learn things from them. 
But what I'm saying, it costs them to do it. Because they want something out of it, so then they're willing to pay a price. How much more? If they'll do that in the world system, how much more should we have consistent, systematic studies dissecting the Word of God, the working of the Holy Spirit, in order to know the truth of God, the power of God manifesting in our lives? Hello? Well... We were watching, was it Bill Winston? Somebody said we were going to have so much revelation we have church every night. I like that. I like that. I don't know how many would come because everybody's so busy doing their thing, but they could catch up with some of them anyway. Let me tell you, you've got to get serious with this. Divine health is not optional. You've got to have it. Otherwise, it's going to hinder your ministry. It's going to hinder your life. You can't really minister a whole lot if you're in the hospital in the ICU ward. It's hard to do it in there. With pipes all over, you go, oh. Start trying to tell the nurse about Jesus, and good for you to do that. But how much more glory is God going to get with you walking in the ICU saying, I'm delivered, I'm healed? It don't matter if this is contagious because it don't come near me. I'm immune. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we got to get serious is what I'm saying. Acts 10.38, are you still there? Acts 10.38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. I just want to point out to you that the Godhead is in divine health. Okay, right there in that verse, God the Father anointed Jesus the Son of Nazareth with who? The Holy Ghost. Is that the Trinity? Yes, it is. Right there. Right? So what I'm saying is, the Godhead, in unison, always as one, is in the health business. They want you well. Hallelujah. All right, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Say power. power. I like that word power. Okay? Who went about doing good. Doing good what? What is the good? Healing all that were oppressed to the devil. It's good to receive healing, isn't it? If, if it's not, then I don't know why you would ever take medicine or go to the doctor. Healing is good. It's always good. Let me just say to you that there are people that testify. They end up in a wheelchair or they end up missing a part of their body or something. And they testify how that uh, God gets glory from this. Now be careful here because you understand that God is always there and God always is going to turn it around for glory. And so you've got to be real cautious here to not think that God put you in that situation to get the glory. Okay? Now just because you're in that situation, the devil got you there. Just because you're in that situation, God doesn't leave you. He still wants to help you and get glory out of it. Okay, but he's not the author of putting you there. So... These people that write books and testify that God did it to them in order that more people could be saved or God killed their aunt so-and-so so more people come to Jesus at the funeral. Well, how much more people would come if aunt so-and-so was still alive witnessing? So don't, don't buy into that stuff. Health, divine health is good. Normal people are good. God considers it good. He said it here. The Godhead said it. Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed to the devil. That's called doing good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because it is the will of God to heal, you understand. 
Look in Matthew, the 8th chapter. Matthew, the 8th chapter. We're not getting very far on this, are we? Matthew chapter 8 is a rich chapter on the will of God to heal. Matthew chapter 8, verse 2. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped Jesus. Him, it says in your Bible. Say, but it's Jesus. Saying, Lord, if you will. You ever heard somebody pray that way? Yes. Lord, if it be your will, would you please heal me? Or would you please heal Mary Jane or Sally Sue or somebody? He said, Lord, if it be your will, or if, if thou will, you can make me clean. In other words, you make me whole, heal me. Verse 3 said, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, a leper. See, Jesus wasn't afraid of leprosy. You hear me? Jesus wasn't afraid of the flu. Jesus wasn't afraid of... And I don't ever read of Jesus missing a service because he was sick. It's just not in here. I don't ever see him... Uh, on dialysis or, uh, you know, going for chemo treatments. I don't see any of that. But anyway, Jesus put forth his hand on this leopard, touched him, saying, I will. That's the will of God. If God Almighty said, I will, that's the will of God. Be thou clean. And immediately, how long? Immediately, immediately his leprosy was cleansed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want you to see that real good and clear here. We're talking about the will of God to heal. There, I don't want any question. We're going to have to continue. I'm not getting anywhere with this, but we'll continue it in the weeks to come. We're going to dissect it real good because... I want it to be crystal clear, 100% washed out of your heart, that there's any slight chance God might not heal you for any reason. You are healed. It is the will of God. Just like the leper saying to Jesus, if you will, you could heal me. Jesus is saying back, bam, I will. I will. I will. I will. That's your answer to your prayer today. I will. I will. Lord, my knee hurts. I will. Lord, my back hurts. I will. Lord, my head hurts. I will. You hear what I'm saying? Okay. On down. Verse 5. Matthew 8, 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented and jesus said to him well has he been a good boy and gone to church is that what he said did he tie this week is that what he said does he dress like a good christian man did he say that i don't see all that in my bible verse 7 he said jesus just said immediately and there was no hesitation that i can pick up in this immediately he said I will come and heal him. There it is again. I will heal him. No hesitation. No problem. No condition, in other words. He didn't say to him, well, you know, if he's been good enough. No. He said, I will come and heal him. You see that two places right at the first of Matthew chapter 8. Now, we're going to go more into Matthew chapter 8 next week. Uh, and I'll stay on this subject. But just in case maybe some of you are saying, well, I'm not sure about this. Look in John 14. John 14. Hallelujah. John 14 and verse 13 and 14. Let's read that. John 14, verses 13 and 14. 
I just want you to make sure that you understand all divine health is covered in this, okay? Amongst many other things. But this, if, there, if there's something, some sickness or something saying to you, some reason why you can't have it, verse 13, 14, take care of it. And whatsoever you shall, whatsoever you shall, whatsoever you, put your name in there, Chuck, Bill, James, Bob, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Ha! There's the will of God right there. That will I do. I will do it. That the Father may be glorified. It brings glory to God, you see. Verse 14. If you ask anything, in case you missed verse 13... Or if you had some question or you're reasoning it away out there in your head. If you will ask anything in my name, say it with me. I will do it. Hallelujah. Say it again. I will do it. That's the will of God for you. If you ask anything, in my name. Well, that means if, you are, if your mind is trying to play tricks on you and explain away why you can't have your divine health today, this covers it all. 2 Corinthians one twenty one says all the promises. How many? All the promises. Are you sure? Did you check every translation? All of them say the same? All the promises? All the promises in Him... Are what? Yes. yes. And so be it. And then the rest of it says, to the glory of God through us. That's what this says. That Father will receive glory by your life. You see, it's not that God's going to receive glory from a denomination. It's not that God's going to receive glory from a structured church. Now, we need structured churches. I'm not preaching against that. But God doesn't receive the glory from the structure like that. God receives glory from a changed, transformed life that people see in the marketplace. They see at the workplace. They see at the hospitals. They see at the drug stores. They see at the nursing homes. God receives glory from average, everyday people whose lives have been dramatically changed, healed, and delivered. Glory to God. Well, I got one of my three points made. But we got next Sunday, don't we? And the one after that and after that. Now listen, we're going to go deep in this. We're, we're not going to just scratch the surface. The Holy Spirit has impressed upon me. This is the message for today for this church. I don't know about all the other ones out there, but I know for us, this is the message. And the reason it is, is because... He has this burning. Jesus paid the highest price possible that you could be well. He wants you well. Hallelujah. God is so good, isn't he? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word this morning. Thank you that we are healed by your stripes, Lord. Thank you, Father. We don't have to wait to be healed. We are healed. Thank you, Lord, that every sickness, every disease dies that touches our bodies. Thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against these physical bodies can possibly prosper. Thank you, Lord, for the mighty Holy Spirit, the greater one living in us. Thank you, Lord God, that you have made us immune to the diseases that are out there in this world. Lord, we are a thankful people. We are a thankful people, Lord. We give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Every day, every breath we take, the rest of our physical lives on this earth, we give you that praise, Lord. Because we know you're the source of our divine health, our salvation, our prosperity. 
Thank you, Lord, for the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit given unto us. Let's just wait on the Lord a moment, saints. We're, we're, we're doing good on time, so please don't get in a hurry.